When I first started researching this, I really started thinking about an old, dingy, wooden manor that's been passed down, and Molly and Giles just got in and they went in and they're like, throw on some new paint and let's open this sucker. They didn't even get the sign spelled right. Mm -hmm. So, when they went in, they made it look pretty, but maybe they didn't find all of the hidden passageways. Mm. So what we've got for you, especially in this window seat, I love this. <laughs> <laughs> the window seat opens up by a trick book in the bookcase. Oh my gosh, yes. that's so awesome. So an actor will pull on the bookcase, cue technicians, and <laughs> the window seat will open up and you can hide through it. First off, I have Holly and Giles. Um, this is their first scene and second and second act. Um, <clears throat> I kind of wanted to have them dress somewhat nicer to try to impress um, their new guests coming in and the second day more relaxed on their clothing. Um, which I have some more smaller sketches with them. We're dealing with a realistic interior set so you know we're talking real-world realism uh, but one of the things that I enjoy about this play is that uh, we can take a little bit of a liberty with it, and so we're going to have some realism in it, but um, one of my favorite whodunit movies is Curse of the Jade Scorpion by Woody Allen. It's actually one of the few Woody Allens I really like. Um, and it has this great sort of very classic, uh, if you've ever watched any of the old black and white 1940s movies, it has this... They were all sort of dominated by this really strong sense of backlight and rim light because the cameras back then, the depth of field, you needed a lot of backlight to pull the actors out of the set. So I thought it would be fun if our world sort of had that same sort of classic 1940s whodunit character to it.